so here we are in our humble little patch of hyssop and uh, gonna start off sharing about some of the properties of this plant the way I always do, which is talking about the taste of this plant. So uh, hyssop, you know, the part used, we're using the aerial parts of the plant typically when it's in flower. We're getting ready to harvest this patch here pretty soon. It's uh, kind of at its peak stage. The leaf is really the main part, but you really use the full aerial plant. And you know, you probably strip the stems off of it. But so this plant, hyssop in the mint family, its Latin name is Hyssopus officinalis or Hyssopus. I don't really quite know how to say it properly, but Hyssopus officinalis is usually how, how I say it. And um, so the taste of this plant it's, it's in the, as a mint family plant, it's in that unique category of mints that are both bitter and aromatic. So some of the mints we see are pretty much strictly aromatic, like lemon balm or like peppermint. Some are really strictly just straight bitter, you know, like, um, like motherwort. And then you've got the ones that are combinations, bitter and aromatic. So and that boy that taste was definitely a little more bitter than aromatic some of the leaves that i've had were um a lot more aromatic and pungent but so we see pungent um, it contains essential oils so it has that pungent aromatic flavor coupled with the the bitter flavor and uh again this is and i've talked about this a lot you know chamomile's like a, an aromatic bitter this mugwort behind me is an aromatic bitter and whenever we see aromatic bitters, we always immediately know that this is gonna be a really great plant for digestion. So that's one of the core affinities of hyssop. Uh, it's affecting the digestive system quite nicely, um, stimulating secretions from the gastrointestinal tract, uh, bringing blood flow to the gut, enhancing nutrition, digestion, and absorption. Uh, but one of the main affinities for this herb is the respiratory tract. And that's really how uh, hyssop is used by most herbalists is as a respiratory remedy. So affecting the throat, the bronchioles, and the lungs. I can already feel it, even just in that one little leaf, <clears throat> kind of feel it opening up my chest and my lungs a little bit, make me want to clear my throat a little bit more. Um, so it's a really great respiratory remedy. Um, and we, really we see this plant, what's interesting about this herb is like, it's primarily used for the respiratory system, but when we read its properties, we see it's been used for darn near every organ system in the body. So it has traditional usage in um, working on the liver. So it was a classic remedy used to treat jaundice and liver stagnation kind of patterns. Um, it's said to promote diuresis, so it has an influence on the kidneys and the urinary tract. Um, as a pungent herb, it does increase circulation, so we have a little bit of a cardiovascular affinity. And then the immune system, so um, this is a classic remedy used for fevers, uh, so it kind of works on what Matthew Wood always describes as the febrile mechanism, um, which he kind of it's kind of cool because he kind of talks about it almost as an organ system unto itself. The whole process of um, the physiological process of how herbs work on a fever, which oftentimes is through the circulation, um, oftentimes working on immunity, and oftentimes working on the neuromuscular uh, control of the, the vasculature. So how dilated or contracted the blood vessels are. As a warming bitter, um, it will also have a, a, a slight affinity for the female anatomical reproductive system. Um, so like that's a lot of organ affinities, right? But really the main and most important one for our purposes and the main usage of this plant, I would say kind of where this plant shines is in the respiratory system for sure. Mm -hmm. 